Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we have the long awaited mid year book freakout tag. I love making this video every single year. This is my sixth year on booktube, just about to become sixth year on July 2nd. And this is my sixth time making this video. If you wanna watch all my previous years of this video, I'll link it down below, all different editions. <laughs> They're cringy, the first couple ones are cringy, so just like, oh, watch up. Um, but um, I really love how I get to like have these moments in history. Like I, I've made this video like for years in a row and I love how I have that to look back on. Anyways, let's get started with these questions. As always, the questions will be linked down below if you want to do the tag. If you're watching this tag, go on and do it if you wanna do it. I'm not tagging anyone like specifically at the end of this video, um, but if you wanna do it, go right on ahead. Like I love watching these videos from people. Question number one is best book you've read so far in 2023. I have three books. I cannot pick one. A lot of these questions, I did not pick just one book, like not possible. My top three favorite books of the year, I do not own physical copies of yet. And I am upset with myself. Um, the first one is Heartless by Elsie Silver. I don't have anything else to say about this book. Like everyone knows why I love this book. It is so good. Like there's a reason why everyone loves this. This is a nitty romance between Kate and Willa. Like. It was so good. And then I also loved Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. This is like so good. It's a enemies, like enemies to lovers romance where he kidnaps her and blackmails her to be his wife because she's been um, writing these essays and articles about him that are not true. Um, and so no one will marry him. And he's like, okay, like you gotta pay the piper. You've been saying these horrible things about me. So uh, you're gonna marry me instead. And then my favorite book of the year so far, by far isn't even out yet. I read an arc of it. This is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. This comes out on July 11th. This is definitely my favorite book of the year so far. This is Surprise Baby with fantastic disability representation. And like, I already want to reread this so badly. I can't wait for my physical copy. I'll be listening to this book constantly when the audiobook comes out. Like I'll reread it over and over and over again. It's so good. Question number two is best sequel you've read so far in 2023. Um, I did pick one for this one. This is Broken by the Horde King by Zoe Draven. I love this book so much. This is my favorite book in the Horde Kings of Dakar series. Like, it is so good. This is like childhood friends to not fully enemies, but like you betrayed me to lovers. Uh, the heroine is a human who lives in this a village of only aliens. Like she's the only human she was adopted into this alien family. And the only one that's like her friend is like the prince of the village of sorts. When they're grown up, she basically tells him that she has feelings for him in front of a lot of people. He rejects her in front of everybody and she is very betrayed by him. This book then jumps years later, like 10 years later when they are full blown like adults and he has come back for this woman because he knows that she's meant for him. It was so good. Question number three is new release you haven't read yet but want to. I have three in here. Um, number one is Bethia by Ruby Dixon. This is her most recent release, I'm pretty sure. No, it was released in March. I think a few books have come out after that. Anyway, this book is quite long, <laughs> quite long. Um, and there's no audiobook yet, so I want to wait till the audiobook till the audiobook comes out because I've listened to all of the books in this series. This is a part of the Corsair Brothers series. I listened to all the books in the series and the audiobooks are fantastic and like they really enhance the story. So I want to wait until the audiobook comes out. I know this is Ruby's first like FFM romance, which I am very intrigued about. Okay. I also really want to read Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I don't own this book. I don't have this book, but I mainly want to read it because of the dragon rider aspect and the uh, chronic illness representation. I know that this book has EDS rep, which is Ehlers Danlos syndrome, which is a similar like uh, disorder to what I have. So I am very intrigued by this one. I've heard like rave reviews, but I've also heard like not rave reviews. Either people love this book or they give it two stars. So like, I don't know where I would fall with that. So it makes me kind of nervous. And then one that I am dying to read, I'm trying to get to it. His Lassiter by J.R. Ward. This is J.R. Ward's most recent release in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. And I want to read about Lassiter's romance so bad. He's one of my favorite characters in this entire Black Dagger Brotherhood series. I adore him. So I want to read about his romance, but I'm trying to read all of her books in publication order. And I have like three more to read before I finally get to Lassiter. So 
I am like just chomping at the bit to read this one. Question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Okay, I have two books for this one. Out on a Limp by Hannah Bonham Young is obviously one, not a part of this list, but I've already read it, but mark your calendars for July 11th, please because that book is everything, okay? Um, but for me, for anticipated releases, on October 10th, I have Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Lees. This is uh, the second book in her um, like Shakespeare retelling series, and it's about the sister to the heroine of uh, book one. Uh, I'm gonna love anything by Chloe Lees, so like I'm very interested in this one. And then uh, the other one I'm really excited for comes out on November 28th, which is A Dance of Smoke and Steel by Mila Vane. We have been waiting for this book, I think for like over two years. It's a fantasy romance and I know nothing about it. Absolutely nothing, but it's a Mila Vane book, especially in this Mila Vane like fantasy romance series that is absolutely like everything. She writes fantasy romance so well. <laughs> like I, I, I'll read anything this woman writes, especially if it's a part of this fantasy romance series. Question number five is biggest disappointment. I have two here. Unfortunately, Karina Halley books are either like, I love them or they're big misses for me. So one that was a miss this year is After All. There were just so many aspects of this book I did not care for. I don't like the fame trope. This book was chock filled with it. And I also hate other woman drama. And this book again was chock full of it. So gave this book, I think two stars. And I was so disappointed because I love Karina Halley's books, like so many of them, but this one just missed the mark for me. And then sadly, I was so looking forward to Speechless by Lindsay Lanza. This book is about Henry and Lucy who end up meeting on an airplane, both going to, I believe, Los Angeles. And for whatever reason, Henry offers up Lucy a place to stay when she's in LA. There were things I liked about this book, like the anxiety or representation that the hero has, I really related to that, but I feel like the negatives for me outweighed the positives. There was a lot of on-page friend time. The hero, Henry, has like, I think like four of his friends who live in the house with them. And at first I was reading this book and was wondering, is this gonna be a why choose romance? Like, why is there so many on-page friend time with her and these guys. That's not the hero. Like I, I honestly thought that this was gonna be like a why choose because I was like, why is there so much on-page time with these friends? I honestly would have preferred this book if the friends just didn't live in the house with them. It would have forced them to talk to each other more and be in this more close forced proximity situation more without leaning on these friends to fill in this gap between the two of them. And selfishly, I also just wanted more uh, chronic illness on page time, like discussions of it. It just felt like when Lucy ended up moving to LA, it's like her chronic illness disappeared. And also one of the things, I don't know, maybe I'm just being very nitpicky when it comes to chronic illness rap, but as someone who has a chronic illness, like I am nitpicky about it because I live with it. And there are a few other things I just didn't care for, but I could talk about that like ad nauseum, I feel like, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to bash this book. I ended up giving it 2.5 stars. It was fun, but it was not my favorite thing in the world. And I was disappointed by it because I honestly thought that this was gonna be like a new favorite of all time. Um, but you can go check out my review on my Goodreads page if you want to know more of my thoughts about this one. Question number six is biggest surprise. And I would have to go with Evil Twin by Katie Wilde. First surprise is I did not expect to love this one as much as I did. And second surprise is that this book is chock filled with surprise and plot twists. I was not expecting it. This is a fantasy romance where our hero in here is a twin. And his brother is like, older than him by like two minutes and he felt like he was like jilted of the crown. He feels like he'd be a way better king than his twin brother. And so he comes up with this scheme to ruin the woman that his brother is destined to marry. But this book is like chocked full of plot twists and just fantastic fantasy romance elements. Like, oh, I was very obsessed with this book. It was also just a big surprise because I didn't expect to love this one as much as I did. Question number seven is favorite new author debut or new to you. So number one, Elsie Silver. I've read three books by Elsie Silver this year, gave every single one of them either four stars or higher. Love her books so far. Um, then the other one is of course Hannah Bonham Young. I've read every single one of her books besides Next to You, which is the second book in her like main series that she's written. Um, so I have to read that one, but I am obsessed with her books. And then number three is Kimberly Lemming. <laughs> I've read, I think two of her books so far and I love them. They make me laugh so much. If you wanna just put like a giant smile on your face, you gotta go read a Kimberly Lemming book. She writes fantastic like fantasy romances that are like novellas that like leave me cackling my butt off. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. I have three. I have Bo from 
I don't know Land by Hannah Bonham Young. I just am obsessed with him and everything that he does, okay? Um, obviously Cade from Heartless. <laughs> I keep talking about both of these books, but like, I love both of those men. And then I also have to mention Kyrian from Broken by the Horde King. I've talked about Broken by the Horde King. Kyrian in there, I love him. This man can grovel his butt off. And I love men who like fall to their knees in a full on grovel moment and he does it. Question number nine is newest favorite character. And for this one, I would have to go with Chloe from Next of Ken by Hannah Bonham Young. Chloe in this book ends up becoming the guardian to her brand new, like newborn baby sister. And she has to have a guy move in with her so she can like make ends meet with like rent and um, making sure that she has enough money to provide for her sister. And he moves in with his younger brother as well, who is deaf and the two of them end up like not really getting along at first like she doesn't really know how to approach this very gruff grumpy man she's now living with um but man he ends up helping her with the baby and like just like everything and uh, i love chloe so much she is so strong and capable and the way she was able to become like a mother in an instant she was not afraid whatsoever she goes this baby is my sister she is now mine to take care of and i'm gonna do everything in my power to provide the best life possible for her i'm getting goosebumps i love chloe like so much question number 10 is a book that made you cry <laughs> i have three so next of kin by hannah bonham young the one i just talked about about chloe definitely cried at the end of that one i also cried in hannah bonham young's other book out on a limb out on a limb literally sobbed like a little baby like oh it's so good and then i also cry during the coldest winter by Brittany cherry this is a forbidden like student teacher romance. Like, oh, it's so phenomenal. Question number 11 is a book that made you happy. Flawless by Elsie Silver was definitely smiling the entire time I was reading that. This is like a bull writer romance where she's like his PR babysitter. Then that time I got drunk and saved a demon by Kimberly Lemming, obviously for obvious reasons, smile on my freaking face, as well as Missile Foe by Kimberly Lemming, which is the next book in the series. <laughs> like. Kimberly Lemming's writing just makes me cackle. She puts this amazing banter in every single one of her books, as well as these just like hilarious moments. And then also When We First Met by Cara Bastone. I was just so happy reading that because it was so cute. This is a neighbor romance. It's also a novella. And uh, the hero in here, just like I wanted to pinch his cheeks. He was so cute. Question number 12 is most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. So I have two. Um, both of them, funnily enough, are historicals. Uh, but definitely I have to talk about Queen Charlotte by Julia Quinn and Shonda Rhimes. Like I am obsessed with these two actors. <laughs> I am obsessed with them. They did so good on the Queen Charlotte TV show and they're just stunning to look at. I have this book like displayed on my bookshelf at all times. It is stunning. It is so pretty. And then I also have Untamed by Elizabeth Lowell. Like this step back is like everything to me. Look at all the pink. I've never read this book, but man. Oh, and you also get some booty action <laughs> with the hero. But this pink is everything. The step back, like, <gasps> I'm, I'm obsessed with this one. Question number 13 is favorite review you've written. Um, and for me, I'm actually going with like a video that I've made or posted. Um, so I have two. One is for youtube and the other one is for instagram so my favorite probably video that i've made so far this year is the alien romance book tag i loved creating that book tag i love putting it together and um if you haven't checked it out yet go on ahead i'll link it down below and you can go do the tag if you want to as well uh, but i realized that an alien romance book tag didn't exist so i had to create one i just loved talking about all of my favorite alien romances for instagram i've been loving the graphics that i've been making like the digital recommendation and graphics or just graphics in general i'm having a lot of fun with canva and i'll literally listen to an audiobook or watch a movie while making these graphics and it's literally fun to me like i love making them so definitely the graphics on instagram have been like a highlight for me this year question number 14 is favorite book to movie adaptation from 2023 i know queen charlotte did not come out first but like i'm obsessed with queen charlotte i'm obsessed with it and it's inspired by the bridgerton books okay like book to movie movie to book this is more movie to book adaptation i have not read this book yet but i'm about to i have the audiobook waiting in my libby right now um but man i'm obsessed with these two characters i'm obsessed with their romance i love george with every fiber of my being 
and that show was like my new favorite show of all time. Question number 15, the last question is, which books do you need to read by the end of the year? Definitely all of them is the real answer here. <laughs> but um, if you want specific ones, I have four that I would love to mention really quickly. So Next You by Hannah Bottom Young. It's the only Hannah Bottom Young book I have not read yet. So I definitely wanna read that before the end of the year. Um, then I wanna read Raven Unveiled by Grace Draven. It's her most recent release. I have not gotten to it yet. It's a fantasy romance, but I wanna reread um, the second book in this series um, before I get to this third one, Raven Unveiled, um, because the characters in this latest one, we meet them in book two. So I don't really remember that. So I wanna read book two again. And then I also wanna read Desire and His Blood by Zoe Draven. I have not read this book yet, but I totally want to. And then I also would love to read A Soul to Heal by Opal Rain. I really loved A Soul to Keep by Opal Rain. And like, I just need to continue on with the series. They're just chunky monkey books. So I have to like dedicate more time to reading them um, and get in the right mindset to read a longer book. But I loved A Soul to Keep so much. So I hope I read this one very soon as well. Anyways, there you have it. That was the mid-year book freak out tag. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me are you gonna leave me any flower emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all